So hello and welcome to The Way to Be. I'm Frederick Dunn and look what's going on in my apiary here. There's a swarm. What hive is it coming out of? Not these. Look at the pollen going in. Things are going great there. Not number seven with the hive gate on it. They're looking great too. Look what's going on here. Number eight. There's a swarm. Wouldn't you know it? I can hear them. But this isn't a bad idea for me right now because I have to review something on Ape May Beehive. So a swarm landed right in my lap. We're going to hive this thing and we're going to put it in a new hive design. Look at this. I slowed it down so you can see the queen departing. That's right. She's right there. Lower right. See that golden abdomen? Just in case you might miss her. I added the text there for you. And she's in great shape. Her wings are good. It's anybody's guess as to why she's departing the hive and why there's a swarm right now. But as I mentioned before, this video is going to be about the beehive that I'm adding to my apiary. So, a swarm landing on a nearby tree is going to work out perfectly as part of my review of the Apami Ergo Plus beehive. So there she is on the right, tumbling around, trying to follow the rest. And here's a slow motion view of it. I know you probably want to see things in slow motion, but this is what it looks like when there is a swarm departing from the hive. Now the interesting part of this is, and one of the things I want to share with you about the dynamic of swarming that's interesting to me. They have their Nansenoff glands up. These bees are on the hive that the swarm departed from. We know that the queen has already left, that she's collecting in a bivouac location on a spruce tree nearby. So you might ask yourself, why would so many of these bees on the landing board be extending their abdomens and opening up that Nasenoff gland, which spreads their pheromone, which draws the bees back home? I think that what happens is they try to recall as many of those foragers as they possibly can because they don't want to lose them. I also think that a lot of the bees depart with the queen and they're in the bivouac location and they will not be returning to the hive. This is a close-up view of a worker honeybee with her abdomen held high and that light streak across the base of the abdomen is the Nazanoff gland that's open and she's, pen she's fanning her wings to make sure that that pheromone gets out and she's not alone. As we saw in the wi wide shot, there are many workers doing exactly the same thing. Now this is a curious part of this. I've noticed that foraging honeybees passing by a hive that has bees on the landing board with their Nazanoff glands open will just join that hive. That's right. Bees that are not from this hive can be coerced into coming in and joining this colony just from this pheromone alone. It doesn't just happen on the hive. It also happens in the bivouac location where the bees are with the queen that we just observed departing. So let's take a look at that also in slow motion. Here they are. They're collecting and because we're looking at this at a thousand frames per second, that means this one minute sequence took only six seconds to capture. So I'm panning down and what you'll see is how quickly these bees are flying in and adding to the mass of this bivouac. Now what I want to suggest here is also not all of these bees collecting on this swarm are from the same hive. That's right. Other foragers from some of the other hives in the same apiary are often prone to just fly over and join a cluster of bees that aren't even related to them. And that's why we can often get a swarm of bees, if we leave them overnight in the cluster position, they can actually increase their numbers from other bees that just happen to be passing by. I learned that by using queen mandibular pheromone lures in the past. So here it is full speed. And you can see how quickly they're adding to it. We know the queen is in there. We saw her fly. She didn't pick the spot, by the way. The workers did. Wherever they land, the queen joins them. Because you might have noticed too, they left uh, ahead of her. So they were already starting to cluster even before the queen landed here. But I'm going to collect them. You're going to see what's going on here. I'm just giving you a close-up of the dynamic of a swarm. 
And again, this is referred to as a bivouac. It's a temporary location. Many of these bees are opening their nests and off glands in order to draw one another together, and they're using this queen's pheromone. And as I mentioned before, even unrelated foragers from other colonies are apt to join this cluster of bees. So here we are, the Way to Bee Academy building. It's really just a bee shed with observation hives in it. And what I'm going to do in here today is introduce you to my latest addition to the beehive here at Fred's Fine Fowl and honeybees. It's going to be an Ape of May hive and uh, I'm going to show you it really happens pretty quick because you don't even have to put it together. Look what they sent me, three boxes. I also have to tell you I didn't pay for these. The Ape of My company was kind enough to send them to me just for my opinion and review of the hive. And that landed in my lap because lots of people seem to want to know what my opinion is on Ape of My hives. I often send them to Cayman Reynolds, JC's Bees, lots of people have them already, but I guess it's a good thing to have here. Let's do an unboxing video. I know that's exciting to you, right? Step-by-step -step unboxing of the components. Now we're just gonna pull them open. We're gonna get right into it. And I'm gonna show you what I think and show you the details. If you haven't seen one of these already, they're a, it's an award-winning hive design from 2015. They won the Apomai Gold Medal for Beehive Innovations at Apomondia. So, here it is. We have a deep brood box with a bottom board and a cover. We have another deep brood box, which could be a super. We also have two medium boxes that came with it. So this whole kit is four boxes. It's called the Ergo Plus Hive, and it comes from Apomai. So it's all plastic and it's insulated and this is a queen grid that comes with it. Queen excluder. You want to make sure that if you're putting this together and you're having supers up above that the queen can't lay eggs. That's what that's for. There's also a divider with it so that you could actually set it up as a nuke box or you could join two colonies together by putting the divider in. And this just shows the details, the embossing on it. It's pretty thick stuff. Good solid stock. I'm going to take a look at the box here. Handles on the side, which also are attached to the metal clasp that's uh, bolted to this Ava May main hive body. I'm going to show you the features. Of course, it has a landing board, adjustable entrances, venting or an entrance. It has a label so that you can label your hive. And of course, the top is the vented top. And they've embossed it with World Beekeeping Awards from Ava Mondia, gold medal winner. So as I mentioned before, that happened in 2015. And their award class was Beehive Innovations. And this little vent comes on the front. It has several positions. That's the open position. Now we have the vented position with just the holes. And then the other position here is as a queen excluder. So the workers can come and go, but your queen can't get out. Then we have the closed position. That's what I'm leaving it in. If you've been watching my videos, I go with single entrance beehives. And I'm going to label this one number 30. So I don't know about their particular label designs, but I use my brass labels there. Side of the box, and I'm going to show you all the angles, of course. This is the metal clasp, heavy duty, screwed onto the side of the box. But one of the things that's curious is the handhold. Look underneath. It's thinner there. So this thing is an R.693 according to the manufacturer, but that can't be true, of course, where we have these thin spots. So that has to be the overall average. There are also two areas for you to clasp uh, on the side clamp here. And uh, I'm guessing that when you don't have the inner cover on, you would use the upper clip. These vents, fore and aft, you can't close them. The whole thing's made of plastic. And here's the back again. They've got divots in it, which of course the thinner spots would defeat to some degree the insulation. There's one hazard here in shipping and that's a little corner of the hind foot here which I'd later fix with 100% silicone sealant. So I just put that on there. I thought I'd show you a close up just of how that's made. So here's the top of it. And it looks like they've got these little rings indicating what the cluster might look like inside. And of course they have that embossed World Beekeeping Awards by Apomania Gold Medal. If I had earned that, I would put that on all my stuff too. So more information, it also says Langstroth and Dadent 10 frame. So this is a 10 frame version. This is the cover. This is the interior surface of the cover. So you can see again, everything's patented. So 
don't be making copies of this stuff. You've also got hive top feeders built in, pretty nice. Got a cover for it. And you can put liquid or solid material in it. You can put sugar in there, you can put your fondant up in there, and the bees can climb up through right there and go out into it. And there's two positions for this. One is for fondant or any solid feed so the bees can climb out and then wander through that whole space. And you can pull that out and turn it the other way, and then it would be for liquid. And just in case you forget, they even mark it, syrup or candy. So for us, we're going to put it in the syrup position because we're going to be having a swarm and we're going to give them one-to-one -one sugar syrup. Eight pounds of sugar to one gallon of fresh water. And this is the position we'll have it in. The bees, when they go up through there, cannot get out through the bottom of that semi-clear cover piece. So now we get that out of the way, we're going to look at what's inside. They included these frame spacers, but frames were not included. It's a 10 frame unit, but it's compatible with my wooden framed standard Langstroth deep frames. You can also see the metal plates on the interior there that the outside handles and clamps are held to. So it's not depending on the strength of the plastic alone, but it is of course thin right there, which means that's gonna not be a R6.9. And here it is with the divider, but I noticed that divider has a space at the bottom of it. So I'm not sure what's supposed to keep the bees on one side or the other. And then you have the dials in it so you can make it vented or solid. So I'm not gonna be using that. I'm going to be putting everything in dead center here. Look at that, we have a pollen trap. So of course I want you to pull that out when it's not in use, and I'm going to explain that a little bit, but there's a tray underneath, and that is the tray with a pollen tray in it also. So I'm gonna be taking that out and also show you how to use that little red piece there. So I'm pulling the pollen trap out. When this is in place, the bees that go through the entrance actually walk through the channel underneath this pollen trap, then they have to go up through those holes and in the process of doing that, pollen falls off their legs into this tray. So because I'm not using the pollen trap and having your bees go up through that and shed pollen into the tray, we'll get that out of the way. And now we're just looking at the bottom. So this is the insert for the bottom. And I can see that that's vented too. So for example, if a bunch of condensation built up in there, there's weep holes built into it so that can run right out. And then we've got the screen, of course. So it acts as integrated pest management with a screen bottom board. Now we can open these up all the way on both sides or just open one side and it already has a mouse guard built in. So I'm gonna have three openings right there because we're putting a swarm in. They need to be able to defend it. We don't need them to get robbed out right away. And I'm gonna start things off with a foundationless frame of fully drawn comb, worker comb over here, worker cells, and then on the right side, we have a bunch of drone cells. Now, of course, they're not gonna be building drones right away, and they can use these cells for immediate storage, and the queen can start laying in the worker cells, which are lower right, and probably not lay, of course, in the drone cells, because that's what they do when it's a mature colony that has a bunch of surplus resources. I also pulled this frame that has started comb on it to give them a boost. And these bees that are in swarm mode are prepared to start drawing comb. I put an A on that to remind myself that that's an acorn heavy waxed foundation insert. So we're gonna do double duty here. I'm also gonna put in Premier Foundation heavy waxed. Why not? Acorn again. You can see when you look at acorn that the bottoms are nice and smooth. In the embossing there on that plastic, food grade plastic, heavy wax, the more beeswax that's on it, the better. That's another one, acorn. And then we come over here and I've marked a P on those that are for Premier. So here's a Premier frame. And so I put one of those on either side of the fully drawn foundationless frame because that's where the bees are gonna start. Take a look at Premier. You can see how modeled it is. So in the bottom of the cells, it has that rough texture. Plus you can see that they have those dots that are visible. It's a little thinner than the acorn and uh, is also heavy wax and smells like beeswax. I expect them, as I've mentioned many times before, to use acorn and Premier Foundation the same. So we have 10 frames in here. I think now we're ready to go. And all we have to do is go out and get that swarm and put it in the hive. So again, we're gonna use these hive top feeders. I'm just putting it together for you again. 
I think the capacity is over half a gallon each, and I'll explain why I know that later. And we're going to put a light syrup in. We are on September the 4th, and September the 4th is late for capturing a swarm, so we're going to have to feed them so they can start to build their infrastructure, and we're going to put that outer cover on. I wish there were an option to close off that top vent, because once again, with my other hives, I don't... Uh, vent through the top. I don't offer second entrances. I only use the landing board entrance and I would like to have some control up there. I'm also not certain about what the R factor is of the cover. Although it looks well formed, it's tough. It's got a groove through the center so you can strap it down. The handles are good and strong. You can pick everything up and uh, the clasps hold everything sure. This shows the louvered angle of the vent on the top. So if rain's coming down, for example, it sheds out. It does not come in. They show their patents again here. And I have to think it's sandwiched through some kind of polystyrene material here on top. But again, there are areas where cold air is going to have an interface up there and that's why they need the vent. You would definitely have condensation in the top of this hive because you have a cold air interface. Now this red piece here, when you don't have the pollen trap in place, you have to install this because it closes it up on the end and no bees or wasps or anything else can now get in from the back side of your hive. So now we're outside. We're ready to go. I've put it in my apiary. Just showing you the details again of the feeder now that we're outside. There is some surface texture there that helps the bees get traction when they come up and over. Showing the dry setting there and then of course the liquid setting which we're going to use. So just a refresher there. Pretty important. You don't want your bees to be able to get up there if you had it in the dry position. And if you have syrup in there, expect to find a bunch of drowned bees. So we're also going to pull some of the frames out to make room for the bees that we're going to drop in here. My method for collecting the swarm out of the tree is going to be to get them in a net. That's right, a cotton net. But first, the weather's turning a little bit. We had storms to the south and storms to the north of us, but we did not get hit ourselves. But we got too late in the day. We're not going to collect them. So the bees were swarming on September 3rd. We're going to collect them in this video on September 4th. Just showing some really interesting unstable air there with those clouds. So it makes for a good scene just for some transition. And here, of course, Part of my apiary, if you're unfamiliar, I have Layens Hive, Long Langstroth Hives, Langstroth Hives, Flow Hives, Observation Hives, and now finally, so many people have asked me to do this anyway, we have Avame Hives, just one. And so it's going to be fun. Here we are the following day, and I'm all set. Everything is set out. My ladder is set up, and I'm going to bring that swarm in. So they're here on this spruce tree. They're about eight feet up. I'm gonna get up there and get them with my net. Very easy to do. And I'm gonna wear a vented bee suit and I'm wearing nitrile gloves to keep my hands clean. Nitrile gloves don't protect you from stings and I'm gonna spray them with sugar syrup. One to one again. They're probably thirsty a little bit, but it also adds weight to the cluster of bees here, which helps me when I shake them down into my net. We get more bees off, and of course the goal is to get most of these bees and the queen. Here we go, get the net in place. It's a 100% cotton net, easy to wash, bees can breathe through it, and it's easy to transport them. So there you go. Easy as that. Now all I have to do, because this is in my apiary, it's right at the fringe, just walk over and put them in the apame hive. Just shake most of them in and then of course I'll put the net down in front of the hive. I'll show you that later. Of course we have a bee coming up and getting on the microphone and the video camera. Sorry about that. Get that sound right in your ear. And I'm giving them a little sugar syrup. Not necessary because I'm also going to feed them here. But I'm going to spritz a little sugar syrup in the front of each of the foundation. Some of the Premier, some of the Acorn, 
That'll just help them get some satisfaction right away and get some carbohydrates in them. It is very hot out still, hot and humid, 80 degrees plus. And we need to push these towards the center too. You can hear them making a lot of noise. And do you know why they're fanning and making so much noise? Because they're spreading their pheromone. They've changed position and they want the other bees to know where they are. So we get these closed up. And you can see that these top trays have vents around their perimeter. There is no way to close off the airflow from the entrance through the top and then of course through the outer cover. Just have to carefully put these on. There's no need to smash any bees while we're doing this evolution. And remember we're going to put one to one sugar syrup in. So I've mixed up a gallon of that. So a gallon of water to eight pounds of dry processed sugar. There's no reason to put a heavy syrup on. Uh, this is not to get them to gain weight. As a colony, there is still plenty of forage out and plenty of resources, lots of pollen. I expect these bees to do very well. And we'll just get that cover on there, make sure we don't have any bees underneath. And you can see that some of them have already come up, un come up under those translucent covers there. Double check, of course, to make sure they're in the right position. Otherwise, we'll have free swimming bees. And it looks like it holds at least half a gallon on each side. So that's a good capacity for a hive top feeder. And that little bee flipped in on its back. Don't worry, she flew out just in time. Get the cover on there. Got a problem getting these bees off of here. So I have to go and get my shark back. Use that just to make sure and collect all the bees off the top. It's a lot easier. And because of all the ribbing and the configuration here on the top, it's hard to get the bees off of there. So much easier just to use this handheld bag. I use it in a lot of other videos. It has a compartment that allows me to open it up right afterwards and just let the bees back out. So doesn't hurt the bees. Great way to get them out of the way. And now we'll just clamp the top down. And I think we're in business here. Remember, there's two levels for that thing to hook, and with the hive top feeder on, I guess I use the lower level. It seems plenty strong enough. Holds it in place. And now we see what's going on in the front. Predictably, they're using their Nasanoff glands, and I have to take the bees that are in the net and put the net in direct contact with the landing board. As soon as you do that, you can hear them pick up, start making noise. Why? Because they found their queen's pheromone and now they're all getting together to spread that pheromone to bring in all those airborne members of their colony. And remember what I said before, there will be bees that just happen to be flying by that will join this colony just because they fly into that pheromone stream. It's very interesting. And the reason I discovered that was because I was using synthetic queen mandibular pheromone and I could bring that out and zip tie it to a tree branch at any time and collect foragers that just happen to be passing by. So that convinces me that foraging bees from other colonies have the potential to just randomly join any cluster of bees that's doing what we're seeing right here. They just follow the pheromone. We know it's not a related queen. In fact, if it's a synthetic pheromone, there's no queen at all. So to see them build into a two or three pound cluster of bees with no queen there got me thinking bees fly by and just join clusters anyway. So any bivouacked swarming cluster of bees could end up picking up volunteers from other beehives in the vicinity. Very interesting stuff. So anyway, as you watch this, you'll see that they're going in. 99.9% .9 sure the queen is in there. Of course, we saw her depart the uh, hive that was swarming. And we can only guess that she's in here because they're very keen on picking up her scent and then spreading that. And if the queen were not present, we would see some examples of bees going in, but turning around, coming right back out 
and you could end up with a queenless cluster where they all mass on the front of the hive and don't enter at all. So this was a great opportunity, number one, to introduce you to the Apame beehive. If you haven't seen them already, you could look them up and learn more about it. There's an American branch of that company. And I'll put a link down in the video description so you can check them out further. You know, I was on the fence a little bit about an all-plastic beehive with plastic insulation and everything else. A lot of people are using them. Uh, this will be, I'll have at least one, of course. One of the things that I do here is introduce beekeepers that are new and backyard beekeepers that are learning. I introduce them to hives of a variety of different designs and I explain the benefits, pros and cons of all of them. And uh, now, finally, we'll be able to show them an Apame hive. I know it's plastic. What is the life expectancy of this hive? I have no idea. So I guess we're gonna find out. And it has plenty of room for expansion. Remember, we have a deep box. And so the configuration would be, let them fill out this box, eight frames at least. And then if it looks like they're doing that within the next couple of weeks, and believe it or not, that's possible. Remember, the queen has comb. She can go to laying right away. She could be producing brand new adult bees within the next 22 to 23 days. So we could see even late September with this colony, we could see a boost in their population and they could actually super up depending on what the weather does, what the environment provides all the way into the first week of October. So you'll be able to watch the updates on my channel. If you don't already follow me, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube. And uh, of course, I'll be adding this to the style of beehives that we track here. But I can tell you my first impression looking at it and understanding how I manage my bees in the northeastern United States is that I like to close off upper entrances. I don't like to use upper vents. And uh, if I want to evaluate a beehive though, I'm going to have to let this one go through winter as designed. I also plan to put fondant in the open containers. I may cover that later. Right now, my favorite fondant for wintering is Hive Alive fondant. Of course, your option is you could put dry sugar up in those feeders on top. Uh, and again, that's not something we put on right now. Right now, they have a light syrup just because I want to kick these off really strong. They don't have a lot of time left. And uh, at the end of the year, we'll kind of assess what kind of honey capacity they have. And then I'll make the decision uh, whether or not to put dry sugar or fondant in the top, probably mid-October. So we'll do a follow-up inspection in three weeks, and we'll see how they're doing. I mean, the way the hive is laid out, the components that they have included, it's very thoughtful. I like the idea that we can control the entrance, that if you wanted to, you could divide this into two colonies and have an entrance right next to one another there, which is interesting to me. If you were dividing it and making two small colonies, uh, your plan may be to actually join them together and that's why you would have the vents between the two and then just pull out the middle board and push them together later and uh, i don't know but i'm just going to use this as a single colony and i gave them access to all 10 frames this is a good sized uh, swarm as you can see they're all still going in and we have a lot of bees here they're very healthy you can look at their abdomens and see that they're fully extended they've loaded up on honey before they departed the colony that they were in and a lot of them have uh, wax already on their abdomens, so their wax glands are active, they're ready to build comb, and they're gonna go to work doing that probably tonight. So I think we have a strong colony here. They're all very healthy. They came out of a hive that had very low mite counts, and I think uh, that queen has very good genetics. It's too bad that she decided to depart against my better judgment. Bees do what bees do. The colony that they departed had plenty of space up above. They still could have expanded. Their population, of course, was very strong and still is. So the residual population of that hive, they've got queens that are just about to emerge from their queen cells. So one of those will hopefully, in a perfect world, fly out, get mated here. And uh, she should be producing within the next 12 days. So by producing, I mean she should be mated and laying eggs 
And as you've also noticed, I hope, there's an abundance of drones here. So getting drones from all the different colonies. If we see a bunch of drones coming out of our own hives, we can make the, uh, the leap that other colonies in the vicinity also have a lot of drones if they're strong and healthy. And so we have breeding potential for the queens that uh, these colonies will be putting out late season. So within the next three weeks, I also have to look at the hive that they emerged from, that the swarm came from. We have to make sure that they have a mated queen that she's producing, that she's laying eggs. Otherwise, we'd be going into winter with a queenless colony and they would be doomed, running out of time. So I would not do a split on my own this time of year, but when the bees do it themselves, it's just another opportunity to collect a swarm, hive them up, do the best you can for them and see how they do. So I want to thank you for watching and I'm just going to leave you for the remainder of this video to watch the bees going into this Ape of May single deep 10 frame hive. I like the way it's set up. We'll just see how things work. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying your long three day weekend. I'm Frederick Dunn and this is The Way to Be.